Welcome everyone, today's video is uh, off the cuff, unplanned, it just sort of popped up because I'm gonna be fixing a computer today. It is a computer that I built. It is this computer right here that I built for my friend Chad, which is why it's called the Chad PC. It's also fairly overpowered with the 5600X and an RTX 3080 inside. However, uh, just to cut to the point, you guys are right. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the MSI Vigor GK50 Elite LL Gaming Keyboard, featuring a sleek brushed metal top plate and fingerprint resisted matte coated keycaps. Kale Blue switches combine mechanical precision with a lighter key actuation pressure, which is great for gaming, and you can use the array of hotkeys for media control or to customize the per key RGB lighting with an array of effects. The unique octagonal shaped keycaps and stable anti-slip gaming base pads complete the package, so click the sponsor link in the description for more on the Vigor GK50 Elite from MSI. So I built this system back at the beginning of December. It was put together fairly quickly because my friend Chad hit me up. He's like, I want a new computer. I was like, you're gonna have a hard time doing that right now, man, but I can probably help you out. Fantex had also just hit me up to see if I wanted to do a build in their Evolve Shift 2, which is a pretty cool small form factor case, which goes more vertical than horizontal uh, to provide you with a mini ITX chassis that can fit a pretty solid amount of hardware, including very large triple slot cooler GPUs, such as the RTX 3080, or a lot of the RTX 3080s. Now the 3080, which is a gigabyte model, is over on this side, and Chad was worried that that was having issues at first, but I'm fairly confident that the GPU is just fine. In fact, I think I have already figured out what's wrong with this system based on Chad's description, and I think it is the thing that uh, most people were c complaining about, or saying, hey, that's not the best configuration when I first put this system together. You can fit CPU air coolers in this uh, case, which is totally fine. They're a little bit height limited, but there's a decent amount of space in there. If you want to go with an AIO like this one, though, there's really limited space where you can put the radiator and you kind of have to plop it down here. This is a Corsair H80 IV2 and I was able to fit the fat radiator and everything down there and it was working pretty well in my initial testing. But anyone who has watched the Gamers Nexus videos or the Jay's Two Cents videos on the subject knows that keeping your AIO pump block unit at the top of your loop is not the best configuration. It's not universally bad or horrible, but generally speaking you want something up higher than the pump block. Usually that would be the radiator which would be better positioned up above it, and that'll mean that air bubbles accumulate in that rather than accumulating in the pump block itself because air cycling through the pump can make the pump have to work harder, can affect temperatures over time, and can affect the longevity of your CPU AIO cooler. And uh, even though it's been uh, about three months since I put the system together, Chad hit me up and said, my system just shut down. And when a system just shuts down, uh, that's indicating to me something has overheated because overheating is usually the thing that triggers uh, your system to say, hey, this is getting way too hot. We need to just turn the system off in order to prevent any damage. That is exactly what happens when CPU pumps fail because liquid stops getting cycled through the unit. So as the CPU gets hot, the heat just pools right here with nothing to draw it away and eventually it overheats. If you've just turned your system on for the first time, you might actually be able to get it up and running for a little bit, uh, but then it will overheat and shut down, and then it'll be like, what's going on? And try to turn it back on. And then since it's already hot, you'll have the same thing happen to you that happened to Chad, which is that when you turned it back on, it shut itself down during Windows startup, and then when you turned it back on a little while later, Windows started to say, oh no, Windows errors and stuff like that, because Windows doesn't really like being shut down abruptly while it's trying to boot. Unfortunately, I'm on a time crunch once again, and Chad really, really wants to get his computer back so he can keep gaming because he's now realized what a, a, an incredible difference it is gaming on this system versus his old system. But because of that, my goals today are just going to be to get this system fixed, and uh, if the CPU cooler is dead, I'm just going to be replacing it. And because Chad doesn't want to have to deal with me again if uh, anything fails next time, I'm going to be swapping in an air cooler. We have the NHL12S from Noctua, which is a low profile option, and then we have the Scythe Big Shuriken 3. I got both of these because I actually don't have very many low profile air coolers sitting around, so whichever one I don't use, I'll keep the other one to have on hand for future builds. Incidentally, Amazon just shipped this like in the box with no other packaging, which I was, a little, I was like, shouldn't they put that in a different box? It's fine inside though, so don't worry. So uh, here's what I'm gonna do. First, power the system on and hopefully verify that uh, this pump is actually dead. Second is, uh, assuming that it is dead, I will need to remove this whole thing, which is not the easiest thing to do in a small form factor case like this. That's part of the reason why Chad needed my help with this. And then three, of course, will be uh, installing one of these air coolers and uh, making sure that that fixes the issue. That sounds like a plan to me, so let's get going. Doing that test boot. So if you have an AIO pump that has failed, you maybe we'll experience something like this. 
So first I do the feel test. If you can feel the pump and you don't feel any vibration at all, uh, there's a decent chance that that means the pump's not working. Second, I'm keeping an eye on the temperature right over here, which uh, started about 40 degrees and has gone up about one degree every few seconds uh, for a while. And it's getting warmer and warmer. Once this hits a certain point, what will happen is the fan down here is gonna spin up more and more because it's like the CPU is hot. We need to cool down the CPU, ramp up the fan that cools the CPU. But since there's nothing cycling through the tubes, there's no heat down there for the fan to dissipate. All the heat is just pooling right up there. And uh, over here we can see, yep, it's still getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So for any of you with an AIO CPU cooler, if you ever have your system just shut down on you out of nowhere, uh, check this out. Make sure you shut down the system and wait till it cools off completely. Then you can boot it up just to get in the BIOS and then you can watch this happening hotter and hotter and hotter. And this will keep going, even though the, the computer's not doing anything. That's, a, that's the key point right now. There is no significant load on this system that would generate that amount of heat. It's just the fact that it's not being cooled by the failed AIO. Now, I'm not sure if I should let it get hot enough to actually shut itself down or not. Uh, 64C, 65C. Yeah, that's not a good idle temp, especially with an with a liquid cooler, 66. Actually kind of surprised that fan hasn't ramped up, but um, I did create kind of a, an aggressive, quiet fan profile for this system when I first set it up. But oh, now I, I think it's actually spinning up now because we've just crossed 70C, 71. I think I validated my theory that the part of this build that I was most concerned about failing is the part that failed. I hoped it would have lasted a little bit longer than this, but uh, now I can at least move forward with my repair plans. So I'm gonna work on this system, get the AIO pulled out, and then we'll install the air cooler. Oh, and now that we're getting up towards 80C, the fan is starting to spin up more and get louder. I can hear it. Okay, I'm gonna shut down. So disassembly fortunately wasn't too tough. The side panels come off easy enough and I had reasonable access to the uh, 120 millimeter all-in-one cooler and I was able to pull that out. Fortunately, no RGB on that meant fewer cables to unplug. Now it's over there with my other failed all-in-one liquid cooler. Is this a trend? We got a trend going on? For the air cooler though, I did a post online, a poll, uh, both on Twitter and on YouTube and a bunch of you guys voted. Thank you for doing that. And you all overwhelmingly chose the Noctua NHL-12S. So sorry, Scythe Shuriken 3. Uh, we'll, we'll use you in a different build. I was pulling the parts out for this though. I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna be a smart because there's a backplate here, universal AM4 backplate that the existing all-in-one cooler used. And uh, I don't wanna have to get back at the back side of this motherboard because the graphics card is back there. And if I don't have to uninstall that, then that's a little bit less work. I to do. So by leaving a couple mounts on from the Corsair H80i, I can then reinstall the mounts for the new Noctua NH-L12S, and hopefully I won't have to get at the back plate or worry about that. But then I realized, oh yeah, there's two different sets of mounting brackets for this cooler because uh, there's a couple different ways you can orient it. Horizontal or vertical, basically, depending on which way you want the fin stacks to go, and you would want the fin stacks to promote airflow across them this way, where air would flow a little bit better, rather than this way, which would be blocked. So at first I thought, oh, it's a tall case and there's an intake at the bottom so I want air to flow vertically and I'd want it that way but then I realized oh yeah there's also a fan right here that is an exhaust and this compartment up here is a little bit separate from the bottom of the case anyway so I think I'd be okay with it this way but then I started positioning it and I realized oh yeah I've got some tall Corsair RAM, so these heat pipes conflict with it if I put it that way. The end of the cooler conflicts with the fan if I try to put it that way. Likewise, those pipes conflict with this fan if I try to flip it 180 from there. So really the only way it's gonna fit in here is this orientation, and I actually had to even, you can bend these heat pipes just a little bit, and I did that just so it would have clearance on top of the Corsair RAM. So I'm fairly sure that will work, but then, you know, I, I, I want a fan attached here, and I was thinking there might be enough space to put like a full-size 25 millimeter like an NFA12, A25, whatever it's called. I was thinking maybe I could fit one of those, but honestly, uh, you know, our clearance here is already getting pretty close. But maybe that's a good thing because you know, this is the fan that it comes with. It comes undermounted to be a more slim solution, but for that, you definitely need shorter RAM. But if I put it like that, then it'll be an intake, maybe right up against the side panel. 
And if the side panel fits, well then, I think there will be minimal clearance and uh, the sort of spacers here across this mesh actually provide a little bit of gap there as well. But that should get tons of fresh air right there. So I think this is the configuration I'm gonna go with. And I just powered on again and uh, the fan started spinning. We started booting. It does not appear to be hitting the side panel here. Even if I push a little bit, it seems all right. And hey, we've booted into the operating system and we can see our CPU temperature here. A little on the warm side, it's in the 50s, but we just booted up and I just ran this and it's still doing boot up stuff and downloading things. So it's actually working right now. And we can see we are hitting like 4.6, 4.65 gigahertz on the CPU, which is uh, what it should be doing. And our CPU temperatures might drop a little bit as that thermal paste starts to heat up and spread out. Ah, I've determined why those CPU temperatures are a little bit on the high side, and uh, that's because I set a pretty aggressive fan curve, including a zero fan mode up to a certain amount here when I set this up, but that was assuming that there was gonna be a pump cycling water across the CPU, and that was just the fan curve for the fan down there that was against the radiator. So I'm gonna reset this to something a little bit more sensible and keep the fan on most of the time, and that should help temperatures. And just to do a quick gaming test here, now that the CPU cooler is upgraded, I have jumped into World of Warcraft onto Chad's, <laughs> onto Chad's tune called Coochie Monster, because of course it is. And we seem to be doing just fine. Maximum CPU temperature is what I'm looking at here, and we're not getting above 61, 62. So uh, that's looking good to me, and I think we can call this a successful fix of Chad's PC that was shutting down by itself. So what have we learned today? Uh, AIO liquid coolers are both a blessing and a curse because when they do fail, when the pump fails, it can cause your system to just shut itself off. Whereas with an air cooler, if you have the fan fail, the uh, heat sink and the heat pipes are still gonna keep functioning. So you'll end up with a warmer CPU, but it's not gonna be as dire a situation as an AIO with a failed pump. I don't think it was necessarily the fault of the Corsair H80i V2. I think it was more the design of the Fantex Evolve Shift 2 and the fact that you just naturally have to have the CPU pump block up above the radiator. It doesn't mean you can't do an AIO in this case, but you probably want to have a differently designed one, like for example, the NZXT ones that have the pump actually in the radiator itself. So that would keep it at a lower point in the loop. We did get some further validation of the now infamous uh, Gamers Nexus video talking about where your pump and block should be in relation to the rest of your loop. So uh, hopefully this sort of adds to that pile. Guys, if you enjoyed this video though, definitely hit the thumbs up button on your way out. And I'll put links to the parts I used as well as a uh, link back to this original build if you want to check out the assembly process. Thanks again for watching. Check out my store while you're on your way out at paulshardware.net. Shirts, mugs, pint glasses, thumbscrew logos, yay. And we'll see you guys in the next video.